Patron funded and patron requested, the Bull Armory Axe C Tomahawk Tabletop Review and Field Strip coming up next on GB Guns. Thanks to our patrons for making this one possible. This is something I've been kind of curious in. I want to thank uh, the Firearm Blog for bringing Bull Armory to U.S. attention and our friend the Humble Marksman for showing us that these are some pretty darn good guns. I've got high hopes for this thing. It arrived, just picked it up today and I thought maybe this was a set of some European shoes or something <laughs> that I had bought on a trip uh, thanks to this box. However, inside the box the packaging changes dramatically. This soft case is pretty nice, plenty thick as you can see. Handles on both sides, we've got Velcro up front, a zippered spot for putting stuff like your range ID, I know some ranges require you to wear a card, and it's got uh, lockable zippers with extra poles for poles put on the uh, zippers themselves, which is pretty cool. That opens up up top with spot for four, five, six magazines. The flap protecting it, and inside we've got the gun and three magazines. So really nice there, it comes with three out of the gate. Also have some Velcro straps to be able to strap this thing in and have it stay stationary. There are a total of four straps here. You could probably get away with sneaking two guns into this case and having it fit fine. Get that all the way and I want to show you the rest of what comes with this thing. Side note, a high quality chamber flag, another plus for those of you that go to ranges that require them. One more bit, partially out of humor, part of why we're going to hit the manual next, aside from showing YouTube what we're about to do in this video, is this tag here does warn you that you run the risk, you risk injury or death by mishandling this firearm and by removing the sticker that's not really a sticker. It's a sign you have read and fully understand the safety instructions. So obviously the manual's next. Speaking of stickers, in the baggie that contains the manual, uh, you get these two pretty cool looking stickers, some cleaning brushes on an actual metal rod, and a real metal uh, jag or cleaning rod for both pushing your swabs through and clearing any misfires you should have, which I think it's pretty nice. Uh, typically those things are polymer, and if you try to use them to get a squib load out, you're SLO. The manual is a vertical fold, and I flipped through it. Uh, pictures, it's all in black and white, uh, all using real photos, but the font is nice and large, and I notice it's very well written, almost as if in a way to cover for anyone that has had zero prior instruction with the firearm. So props to them for that it goes really really into detail uh, what all needs to be done with things. In the ammunition section I checked of course as always to see if it's going to run plus P and it said to not use reload remanufactured or hand loaded ammunition as it may not meet applicable SAMI, CIP, or NATO standards. I'm going to take that to mean that this gun can run SAMI, CIP, and NATO standards and since American SAMI plus P ammunition is basically CIP or NATO level pressures, 10% higher. Um, I'm going to assume that means we can run plus P through this. Uh, as with anything, you don't want to do too much plus P unless the gun's really built for it because it can cause some damage, but it does help expand what we can do for our what's for dinner test. This is an optics ready model. Uh, it's cut for the RMR footprint and the RMR only. We'll get this stuff out of the way and let's take a look at the gun after I cut that tag off. You might have noticed that manual was for the axe cleaver, hatchet, and tomahawk. <laughs> I remember all three trim levels and as best I can tell those are just trim levels. This is the tomahawk which is their sort of top dog. It was uh, previewed and teased as having a titanium nitrated barrel but when I purchased this, those seem to be unavailable or maybe that didn't happen for final production that went with a stainless instead. First impression I had pulling this thing out of the box, which again was just an hour or two ago, I picked it up at the shop, is the color, the richness. Now those of you guys that have been with the channel for a while know that we use harsh lighting. We do not color correct, we do not tint, we don't do any fancy video work. We just show you the stuff and let the information speak for itself. This gun really is as beautiful as it looks <laughs> on camera and in pictures. Um, you know, typically when you see ads for stuff, they've enhanced stuff, they've added filters, they've tweaked some colors to give you a real rich look. No, this is richly and nicely done. 
as if done by a company that really cares about those kind of things and cares about how the final product is going to come out. You know, there have been plenty of examples out there of someone having a brilliant design and then either do budgetary restraints or them not caring what actually gets manufactured and shipped to us to the consumer is never as pretty as the teaser shots you saw. This thing is pretty. All right, we'll check clear. And it's clear, got a nice bright pinkish, uh, kind of a salmon, I guess, colored uh, followers in the three magazines that came with the gun. And they do have bull armory base plates on them. Check ejection power. Nope. It is truly a magazine release, not a magazine ejection. They do fall free. When we get to the range, one of the many tests that we do on guns like this that take Glock magazines is run a bunch of aftermarket Glock mags through it and see how they all fit and feed. So you guys know that if you've got a perfect or a favorite, what's going to run on the gun, what's not, uh, or if you're looking at the gun, you'll know which magazines to possibly avoid if you want to plus up your mag count for them. The magazines do have a steel liner in them. Witness windows on the back, just like original Glock mags, and are cut for an ambi mag release. But there's that bull armory base plate. You notice the base plate has little wings on it that corresponds to the relief cuts here. That's for helping to strip a mag out should it get stuck or if you don't know how to clear a Type 3 malfunction. Now let's take a look at this gun. So, yes, this is inspired by... Sounds a little different, doesn't it? It's got a different sound. Inspired by the Glock 19, using expired patents for the base work and then bolt armory. Did a reinterpretation of a lot of things. We've got a more 1911-esque grip angle here, completely different texturing, deep serrations on the front of the slide, a window on the top of the slide to help reduce reciprocating mass. And a few other upgrades that we will find along the way as we take a look at this gun. One of the things that kind of strikes me in looking at all of these, I guess you could say Glock pattern uh, guns, is they really go to show how far Glock didn't go. Um, you know, Glock uh, created a great platform and kind of has let it sit for 30 years, maybe 40 years. So um, nice to see companies taking advantage of that expired patent to get the legwork out of the way and then put their spin on things. This obviously is potentially oriented at the more competitive market, like competition guys. But with just the four inch barrel, I don't know. Uh, I think it could still be a carry gun. If you guys are worried about windows like this on the top of the slide, they do have other trim levels without that. Personally, I don't think if you're maintaining your gun that that's gonna be any type of issue. Plus those beautiful flutes in there, and we'll get a closer look at it later, help to get debris out of there as this thing cycles. So, starting at the front as we always do, and YouTube, I film this with a camera that is about two feet in front of my face, pointed 90 degrees down. I am standing behind the camera looking at a screen and 90 degrees back at my eye. I am not pointing this at my face. So, <laughs> um, you can see right away these cuts, uh, kind of exposing some of the barrel, a little bit of a beak look, if you will. I think it's just a style thing. It does also help reduce a little bit of weight, and you notice that this serration or following the pattern of the serration is not really a place that you would pinch but it is a place to remove more metal and help reduce reciprocating mass of the slide. These serrations are good and deep, pretty grabby, and notice they're significantly deeper than the ones in the back which are more of a visual effect than anything else. So interesting thought there although if you're running an optic you're going to be smacking the optic or grabbing whole hand so maybe serrations in the back don't need to be as deep. We've got 1913 rail, yes, and three slots on here. Now from here to the trigger guard isn't a whole lot of space to mount something, but it's nice to have the options at least available there. And you see the contour here takes us to a ledge. Get the light to hit it. Nice index spot to rest your support thumb for more recoil control, and your firing finger hits a nice cliff up there. I also noticed this hourglass shape on the trigger guard, which would make for a good resting spot for those who like to rest here. I rest here just out of <laughs> from years of being an instructor and years of going to classes. Doing this makes it really easy to see that there's nothing on the trigger. Having a finger down here, depending on where, where other people are, it can be harder to see if the trigger is being touched or not from afar. Obviously you can see my fingertip. 
So this is just kind of the plate thing, but a lot of people do this, especially if you lack the dexterity to reach up here. So we have that hourglass shape and what looks like a suggestion of a double undercut. I'm not entirely sure if it's truly an undercut or just these points creating that visual. Put it on a flat edge using that shadow between these two boards, assuming these ancient military cannon crate boards are even straight. It looks to me like it's just a visual impression of a second undercut. What is nasty undercut, however, is for that main knuckle right there. This should be Glock knuckle free. We'll have to run this at a course or something sometime to see if we get that. Uh, nice, nice large magazine release that's easy to get to. And you do have a little bit of relief through there. And you notice the texturing here promotes passing the hand onto it and resists movement. So smart texturing on that. Other texturing on the front strap is rather aggressive. You guys can see the ledges there. Kind of some sharp edges that's really going to grab on and it isn't grabbing in the direction it needs to. Uh, that is preventing this action as the gun tries to recoil. So smartly done. Underneath, not really much magwell, a little bit of beveling around the edge here, but uh, I mean, I've said it a million times, when you have a double stack, single feed magazine, the magazine is effectively a magwell. You can reload plenty fast like this, you just gotta learn. Texturing on the side panels is the same wedge, though not as aggressive as it is on the front. Um, the back strap, I'd say, is probably second place, minus right here. As far as aggression, you do have an eyelet, but no spot for a plug for the classic Glock plug accessory deal. Speaking of Glock, the slide release and lock seems to be the extended model off of Glock. And I noticed also that this cut here and the shape of this extended beaver tail prevents, at least in holding it, haven't shot it yet, getting my knuckle beat up there, which is something that Glocks did and some other guns do. It's just enough space for my knuckle to hit. Now that's totally a personal thing as far as how my hand fits the gun, but it was a point of literal irritation for me with Glocks and it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen here. On the back, we can see our back panel and our sights. They are three dot sights, appear to be Glock style cut. This is ledged, but with a swoop, so unfortunately you can't use that for racking. So not the tactical type of ledge thing, just the height. But uh, the sights also feel to be made of metal, not plastic. So nice touch there. Coming around the right side, we can see that our magazine release is likely reversible, which would make sense considering the magazines have the ambi cut on them. And everything else is very Glockish. We'll touch on the trigger, and then we'll field strip and take a look inside the gun. Trigger talk. <laughs> almost forgot. This is a very interesting, nice looking shoe on the trigger here with a red safety dingus. Glocks are known for pretty trashy triggers, but a good reset. So what is Bull Armory's take on it? Nice defined wall. Probably around six pound ish, a defensive level weight, but clean crisp break, and as you can see, it breaks with the shoe perpendicular to the ground. Our reset. It's forceful, can be felt in the finger and heard somewhat, so, and it takes us right back to that wall. A little bit of grinding there on the reset, but that could be just because the gun is brand new. I'd say this trigger is probably appropriate for carry use, However, that doesn't mean it can't be run fast. If you doubt me, we'll see how it goes when we get to the range. Field stripping on a field seat tomahawk. It's gonna to look familiar for anyone that's done a Glock type gun before. First, we're checking for clear, very important, because we've got to depress the trigger to release the striker. Pull back on the takedown tabs. There's one here and one on the other side. These are a bit sharp. And then I squeeze like this, and we need to pull the slide back about a quarter inch, eighth of an inch or so while we hold those tabs down and the slide will come forward when you release it and then off the gun. To take a look inside the frame, at the internals, see a very, very Glock pattern build. 
as far as compatibility with aftermarket or other parts, it looks to me like this would take uh, most of your Glock aftermarket parts. Why you'd want to change anything in this gun, I don't know. It, to me, seems pretty good so far. Coming up to our slide, you can see we've got a captured steel guide rod. Nice upgrade. And then to get the barrel out, tap down, pull back. And you can see our beautiful barrel with that end mill style fluting. This is rather deep. A little mesmerizing as it turns, isn't it? <laughs> and our feed ramp, this was obviously, at least I assume, test fired, but who knows, it's a long road from Israel. And we'll grab some of our nozzler match and we'll check for chamber support and chamber fitment. To be fair to the gun, I did a wipe out chamber in that feed ramp, which is nicely polished. And uh, we're using a nozzler match for this because it's the most precisely manufactured ammunition that I've come across. What we're looking for here is how much of the brass is supported once the round is in the chamber. Glocks are notorious for having very limited support and that's what gives them the, the Glock smiley. They'll leave a, a smiley face mark on your brass as the brass swells more where it's not supported. It's important in case you have an overpressure round or some type of case failure where it's not supported is likely where it's going to rupture and then send all that blast back into your hand. So to test this, we're gonna drop around in, listen for a nice plunk. Sounded pretty decent. See if we can rotate the round. It's a little, little snug in there. And then when we're looking at support, what we're looking for is how much brass is protruding. Not much at all. Maybe a little bit under support there, but nice deep chamber. Um, I've seen a lot of guns where it doesn't go up this far. Now this is a hollow point 115 grain. It'll be interesting when we do our what's for dinner test with different length projectiles to see where they want to stop in there. But this certainly fits deeper than most. And lastly, to take a look at our slide. Very cleanly machined. I'm not sure how much of this is a surface coating and how much of it's the raw metal, but it all looks very nicely done. Just a little bit of dirt and mess in there from the test fire and or shipment. Reassembly is a simple inversion of the disassembly. Drop our barrel back in, make sure it locks in place. Oh, another thing I noticed, speaking of barrels and finish, I have racked this thing a few times uh, playing with the dry fire and we've got a little bit of wear there, but not the standard typical ugliness that you start to get on pretty barrels after you run the slide a few times. We'll have to take a look at the end of the range video and see if we lose any prettiness. Replacing our recoil spring fingers are slippery from the oil, which sits on that lower ledge in there, in case you weren't familiar. And with all that together, bring the slide back over its rails and rack it and it's good to go. Hand slipped off it and that is some fine grease they use for oil. When we get this to the range, you're going to get the impressions of two shooters with two different backgrounds, two different experiences, preferences, and most importantly two different hand sizes. We will do um, full magazine plus one to test out these bull armory magazines. A multi-mag test running a variety of different Glock pattern magazines to see which it runs on or if there's any it doesn't like. Then we'll get uh, to our what's for dinner test to see what kind of ammo it eats running of 10 different loads of different case materials, different projectile weights and projectile shapes. We'll do sights and trigger control test which might be interesting with this heavier but very predictable trigger on the spinner target, then some practical accuracy before giving you our concluding thoughts. Full details, specs, where to find this thing and all that will be in a article on gbgunsdepot.com. Check the video description or pinned comment to find that. Other than that, this is an impressive looking gun. It, uh, I'm rolling it around to try to make sure the light hits it in all the different angles for you. But really guys, this, uh, it's as pretty in person as it looks in pictures. And that is uh, sadly uncommon with a lot of gun marketing these days. Um, I'm really impressed with the thought that went into the design on this frame. And the slide's pretty cool, the barrel's beautiful. I've got high hopes for this thing. We'll see how it works when we hit the range, and we'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching.